UK diesel and petrol prices, some Brits paying £220 a year more. We examine the issues around UK fuel prices, why petrol and diesel is so expensive, and where to get cheaper fuel. Petrol and diesel prices rose by 3p a litre in December, taking prices to their highest levels since July 2015, according to new figures from the RAC. The price hike comes as a result of oil production cuts announced by the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, to increase the price of oil. The rise in fuel prices means motorists paid on average 117.23p per litre of petrol and 119.63 per litre of diesel in December. However, exclusive figures obtained by Auto Express show that regional variations in fuel prices across the UK across the whole year have resulted in some drivers spending over £220 more than others when refueling their car. Despite a seventh consecutive fuel duty freeze in November by the government, pump prices across the country are far from balanced, as shown by the figures obtained from comparison site petrolprices.com. They varied by more than 20 pence per litre from the cheapest areas to the priciest. In the past 12 months, motorists at two locations in Argyll, Scotland have forked out the most for fuel, with average prices hitting 125.9 ppl for petrol and 125.1 ppl for diesel. That compares with just 103.9 ppl for petrol and 104.5 ppl for diesel in Tilbury, Essex. It means a driver covering the national average of 9,101 miles a year at 40 miles per gallon in Argyle would have spent over £1,300 in 2016 to fill up their petrol car. Yet the same driver in Tilbury, Essex, would have forked out just £1,074. It's not a simple north-slash-south divide that's causing price discrepancies, though. Petrolprices.com Managing Director Jason Lloyd said, Our results show that when it comes to petrol, although Scotland has some of the most expensive prices, it also has some of the cheapest. Instead, pump prices often reflect both how affluent an area is, as well as how costly it is for forecourts to transport fuel to their pumps. Lloyd added, Stations tend to charge more where average earnings are higher. Transport costs can also play a role. How close a refinery is to an area can sometimes make a difference. A high concentration of fuel stations in an area will usually result in lower prices at the pumps as forecourts battle it out to entice drivers to spend with them. Despite the uneven prices that benefit some over others, the overall trend for 2016 showed average fuel prices rising with charges at petrol pumps increasing from 102 ppl in January to 115 ppl on average in December, and diesel surging from 102 ppl at the start of the year to 117 ppl in December. Outside influences like Brexit were partly to blame and Lloyd predicts prices will continue to rise in 2017. He explained, this upward trend is likely to continue, although it will fluctuate based around key global events. We are unlikely to see the extremes of pricing near the 145 PPL levels of 2012 with the oil strikes, but we do expect prices to reach between 120 and 130 PPL in 2017. 5 Highest Prices Average Petrol Slash Diesel Annual Cost of Filling Up Acharakli, Argyle. 125.9 ppl slash 125.1 ppl. 1,302 pounds and 25 pence. Tynabru Aich, Argyle. 124.6 ppl slash 124.5 ppl. 1,288 pounds and 80 pence. Wulakum, Devon. 122.9 ppl slash 125.1 ppl 1271 pounds and 21 pence freshwater isle of wight 121.8 ppl slash 120.8 ppl 1259 pounds and 84 pence isle of benbicula western isles 
121.3 ppl slash 121.2 ppl 1254 pounds and 67 pence 5 lowest prices average petrol slash diesel annual cost of filling up Tilbury, Essex 103.9 ppl slash 104.5 ppl 1074 pounds and 73 pence Spenny Moore, County Durham 105.3 ppl slash 106.7 ppl 1089 pounds and 21 pence Lonehead, Midlothian 105.5 ppl slash 106.7 ppl 1091 pounds and 24 pence Dukenfield, Cheshire 105.7 ppl slash 106.7 ppl 1093 pounds and 31 pence Hornsey, East Yorkshire 105.8 ppl slash 107.3 ppl 1094 pounds and 34 pence what makes up the price of fuel the price of fuel can be divided into three sections the taxes imposed by the government the costs of drilling refining and transporting and the profit margins for the fuel companies for petrol diesel and bioethanols the government gets around 65 percent of the overall cost through fuel duty and value added tax VAT. The fuel duty represents the fixed price of fuel it stays the same regardless how much overall oil prices fluctuate and is currently frozen at least until the next UK budget on February 20, 2017. Currently, the Treasury adds 57.95 pence to each litre of fuel through fuel duty, and another 20 percenter through VAT. How much you pay in VAT depends on how much fuel you purchase. The second biggest chunk comes from the wholesale costs of the fuel itself. The wholesale cost is a combination of currency exchange rates, global oil prices, and even domestic supply and demand. Finally, the smallest share of what motorists have to pay for fuel comes from the filling stations themselves. A typical fuel station profits around 2p5p per liter, but tough competition can drive this down further. Supermarkets increasingly use fuel prices as a loss leader to tempt customers in. Why is petrol and diesel so expensive? It seems bizarre that the digits on four-cord price boards have barely changed when global oil indexes have plummeted from $100 per barrel of oil in 2014 to below $40 in 2016. Although many motorists think petrol stations are patting themselves on the backs and reaping in massive profits, the reality is that despite global oil prices tumbling, an average forecourt only makes 2 to 5 pence of profit per liter of fuel sold. The real reason why prices remain frozen is because of the costs the government has attached to the price of fuel. The government's share of taxes represents around two-thirds of the entire cost of fuel and because the fuel duty is a fixed cost, it remains unchanged by global oil prices. The drop in oil prices thus affects only around a third of the overall price of petrol and diesel, which explains why huge slumps in global oil indexes translate to only small savings at the pumps. Why are global oil prices falling? Global oil indexes are the current seismometers of a power struggle between the cartel-like organization of the petroleum exporting countries, OPEC, and non-OPEC countries that have increased their own domestic production through alternative means of drilling for oil. Hydraulic fracturing or fracking the process of pumping water and chemicals underground to break apart the rock and release available oil and gas has proven hugely successful in the North America. States like North Dakota have filled up with oil companies looking to cash in, causing a headache for the likes of Saudi Arabia and the other Middle Eastern countries in OPEC. Add in more oil coming from countries like Russia, Nigeria, and Venezuela, and it's easy to see how the increasingly crowded market could force prices down. Keen not to lose top dog status in the global oil supply chain, OPEC responded by maintaining its production levels, thus supplying the market with more oil than is demanded.
This is what is partially driving down the price of oil and it is being done to make the means of oil extraction prohibitively expensive and to push smaller oil producers out of the market. However, recently OPEC announced it would cut back production, suggesting the falling oil prices will come to an end. Oil prices rising by 11.75% from between November and December 2016. Why does my local supermarket offer cheaper fuel than an independent forecourt? Supermarket forecourts usually offer the cheapest fuel prices and this is because of the market power supermarkets hold. Companies like Asda, Tesco, Sainsbury's and Morrison's are all in competition with one another, so they keep fuel prices as low as possible hoping that when motorists come to fill their tank, they might do their weekly grocery shopping, too. There are persistent rumors that supermarket fuel contains fewer additives and is of lesser quality than fuel from traditional forecourts, but there's little hard evidence of this. All fuel sold in the UK has to abide by the standards set in the motor fuel regulation. Why is diesel more expensive than petrol? Although diesel and petrol are taxed the same by the Treasury, historically diesel has been more expensive than petrol, as domestic refineries have struggled to meet demand. This has forced the UK to import diesel from other countries at a greater rate than petrol. However, the influx of cheap diesel from countries like Saudi Arabia has turned the tide, swinging diesel wholesale prices closer to that of petrol, and bringing the pump price down with it. Why is fuel so expensive on motorways? Recent figures from the RAC suggest motorists topping up at a motorway fuel station pay up to 15 pence per litre more than elsewhere. Motorway fuel stations argue the reason their prices are higher is that many of them are open 24 hours a day and offer more services than a regular forecourt. Motorway fuel stations also pay high rent prices for the buildings they operate. In more remote areas, Fuel is often more expensive because of the higher transport and supply costs, but according to RAC fuel spokesman Simon Williams, this doesn't apply to motorway stations, we can see no reason why motorway fuel should be so much more expensive. In fact, arguably it is much easier from a delivery point of view than it is getting fuel to urban filling stations. A new pilot scheme by the UK government is installing electronic boards on the M5 between Bristol and Exeter that display motorway fuel prices. Similar systems can be found in countries like France, and if the trial is deemed successful, more motorways across the UK will see electronic signs posting fuel prices. This would provide some much-needed price transparency for motorway drivers. What is the rural fuel rebate? The rural fuel rebate is a scheme operated by the UK government that cuts 5 pence per litre from fuel prices in 17 of the country's most rural areas. It was approved by the European Union and now benefits over 125,000 people living in areas like the Scottish Highlands and the Lake District. These areas are often harder to reach, forcing forecourt to charge higher prices to account for the higher cost of supply. The rural fuel rebate aims to let residents and those traveling in these areas to benefit from cheaper fuel.